All right, so this is this day in baseball history for February 28th, the last day of February. Yes, baseball history does exist. February 28th, 1966, refusing to report to spring training, Dodgers pitchers Sandy Koufax and Don Drysdale begin their joint holdout, asking for $1 million, a three-year contract, excuse me, to be divided equally between them, which is very, very interesting. So let me back up on that one. So a three-year contract uh, for a million dollars that they wanted to split. Mm. The deal equivalent to an annual salary of $167,000 for each pitcher will make them the highest paid or make, make them the best paid baseball players, easily surpassing Willie Mays uh, $125,000 yearly paycheck with the Giants. So this was actually at the, almost like the beginning of players starting to kind of ask for these salaries, get more involved. Uh, eventually the Kurt flood, um, basically refusing to be traded. Um, and so there was a lot, this was a kind of a, a very pivotal point in baseball salary history. And Jack, I know that you did some research on this. Yeah. As well. Yeah. No. So in today's dollars, it, it was 1.0, 1.05 million. So in today's dollars, you're roughly looking at nine million two hundred seventy nine dollars eight hundred eight hundred and ten. So nine that divided into your, these guys are going to be taken home like 4.7 a piece in today's money over right. three years. And what I love is that they good brother together and they mm -hmm. took a stand together and like, dude, starting to let the oppressors know, man, like we are the ones that are, that are doing this. I mean, yep. this is we're making millions, players, right? Mm -hmm. This is before a player's union, which we can all talk about the pros and cons of players unions all day, but I mean, just as somebody had to be that first one to make that step. And like, this is a huge part of that. Yeah. Yeah. This was a, a, a big time. And, and actually both of these players at the time were pretty big celebrities at the time too. And it would have definitely looked bad. And and, and I can't remember what, what they were in the world series, Kevin, uh, oh, during these years. Uh, I, at least once or twice. I want to say they won the world series 65. I'd have to look it up really quick, but um. One thing is too, this is, I think this might be his last season too. I think that Sandy retired after this year, if I remember right. Yeah. And at 30, it's something crazy like that, right? He's yeah. like an art issue and it's like, no, yeah. I'm, I'm done. It's like, all right, well, you know, and, uh, oh goodness gracious. Yeah. They had just won the six. They just won the world series in 65. Right. So a lot of leverage there. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Good for them, man. Good for them. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. And they won in 63. So, you know, you have like, Two right there, and even in this year in '66, they made the World Series, and but they lost to the Orioles. But still, three World Series in like you know, like in like a four-year stretch. That's pretty amazing. And those two are probably arguably the biggest part of it for sure. Yeah, you know, yep. especially nowadays in the playoffs, if you want to make it, you need at least two fantastic starting pitchers to get there. Yeah, did they they beat the Yankees in '65. Uh, um, the Twins are the Twins. Uh, oh, oh, okay. oh, okay. Wait a minute. '63 is when they beat the Dodgers. I uh, beat the Yankees, I believe. 63 is when they beat that. Yeah. Cause yeah. I, me I remember that, 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 yeah, 63. Um, that, uh, Mickey Mantle when he hit that home run in game one, but then, right. um, but they wound up beating him. Mm -hmm. right. I love that picture. Do you like, like, like Don Drysdale looks like, what is he going to do to that ball? Oh my I, I gosh, he's got such a vendetta against that ball. It's like, oh my yes. goodness. That, that, that's always a funny thing. I, whenever they have pictures from like the, the 50s and 60s, it, you yeah. know, probably even earlier, but they always like look at the ball like, oh yep. wow. This is <laughs> <good."> <laughs> cheers to this, Andy Kopak. Still around 87 years old. And yes, he did finish up after the 66 season. Yes. So. I can just and, say that they're, they're probably c comparing grips. That's that's yes. what I, that's what I take right. from this one. Yes, <laughs> I was hoping you had, you were ready with a Don Drysdale's uh, photo in in his future acting career. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, you know we we we've done that a lot, and uh, I believe Don Drysdale was the inspiration for Herbie the Love Bug. Oh, his, yes. uh, his, uh, his number on there. So yeah, because uh, yeah. his number. Yeah, that's right. It was right. Number and, and if you're a, a long time watcher, you would have learned that on the very early uh, edition yep. of our podcast. It wasn't he on the Brady Bunch? He was on the Brady Bunch. There you go. All right. He was. February 28th, 1975, the Mets purchased slugger Dave Kingman from the Giants. 
San Francisco drafted the 26-year-old first baseman outfielder as the team's pick in the initial round of the secondary phase of the 1970 amateur draft. Um, so, so who could um, who could Dave Kingman? Oh, oh, oh I, actually, I I, uh, I was I was going to ask a, a, a poll uh, of who he was be compared to today, and I actually have a player in mind that I actually I call him the modern day Dave Kingman. Um, does anybody, anybody in the chat want to, want to oh, yeah. go for it? Yeah. Um, if, if you know who I'm talking about, it's like a player that plays today that could be compared to Dave Kingman. And, uh, I'm totally spacing on the guy's name right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> I can't believe I'm spacing the guy's yeah. name. Like, I'm like, I know what teams he's, he's played on, but I'm like, yes. Oh my gosh. Where I've, had, I've had him on fantasy baseball and I refuse oh, to draft him or have him on my team I, yes. ever again, because yes. he's, I he's, he's yes. He, for, for every one home run, he has about 10, uh, nine strikeouts. I'll say, yes. I'll say nine. Mm-hmm. Okay. I got now. I had the first name in my head, but I had a different last name. Like, okay, now it's in there. Yeah. You when know, he, it, he, when you have 150 years of baseball in your head, you know. <laughs> there's this great you know, um, like Dave King Kong Kingman here. Yes, King Kong, and and uh, I that's mean, is he wearing eyeliner? Is he wearing like mascara or something? What's going on with his eyes in this? Method? Yeah, his lashes are on point, bro. Saying, oh, like, what? Ian's going You're with close. Joey Votto. No, I, I'm You're talking close. about. I'm talking about like a pure home run hitter. Like it's it's either home run, walk, or well, eight strikeouts. I mean, I can see so that's who first came to my head, but I didn't mean that, Joey. <laughs> yes, yes, you, you're 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 close with Joey, and uh, yeah. and it would be Joey Gallo. Yes. He's a very comparable to oh. um to him. Although I don't think he's on the home run pace that Kingman was. Kingman like well, Kingman hit like over 400 home runs, right? Yeah, I think he was. Yeah, and uh, I think somewhere in like 440 or something like that. I'm, yeah, and let me, let me was, test my Rain Man knowledge. That, that's amazing <laughs> if if you get even close. But, I'm um, sure I'm pretty close on that, but that's a pretty know. good comparison to to Joey Gallo. Yeah, he's one of those guys who uh, you know you automatically say, "Oh, he had a lot of home runs, go to the Hall of Fame," but uh, no, it doesn't work that way. Yeah, totally. Uh, why can't I see home? Of course, when I just do a Google search, it lists all his years, doesn't list home runs. Like that's the one yeah, so category we want to know. <laughs> Four forty-two. I was too wow. long. Wow. wow. <laughs> <laughs> You're uh, sick in the head, dude. Yeah, I know. Wow. I know. <laughs> so here's some of his nicknames, Jack. Kong, King Kong, and Sky King. I like Sky King. Sky King. Yeah. And uh like he's uh, a junior. 40, yeah, exactly. <laughs> 442 for home runs, uh 1,210 RBIs and 16 seasons, three-time all-star. Yes. So there's yes. at least the people who are like, oh, he's you know, considered for Hall of Fame. But then if you look at his batting average, oof, I'm sure it's batting average, ball. strikeouts. He he was feast or famine, yeah. but he was also a guy in the era of like stri- strikeouts. Two thirty six lifetime batting average. That's yeah. still like thirty points ahead of Joey Gallo. Yeah, probably. and he didn't have the glove and and everything and the uh, playing the field to get to get in. So uh, a great player, a super he, awesome. He was the modern day player. Yes, feast or famine. Yes, it, that's actually yeah. very true. He's very of today. For sure. No, no, no. But who was who's the fantasy player the on that you won't have on your fantasy? That's what he just, he said oh, Joey Gallo. Joey Gallo. Okay. Yes. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I, I don't know where he went to because he had to go to the Dodgers, right? Um. Yeah. He, went, he was on the Dodgers, but I think that he's with. He I want to say. Oh. oh my gosh, Minnesota. Hashtag to the research. Uh, I, I All right. Hopefully, I can beat <clears throat> in the chat. I, I, I got. A, I, I got a little bit of time. I see to, the Twins. To, yeah, I thought he went with Minnesota. Yeah, I, I got a little bit of time to to look into Dave Kingman, and the the one thing I said that he was uh, injury prone and very temperamental. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and striking out a lot. I'm sure you know. Yeah, he was a he was definitely at one of those uh, players they call feast or famine. He was mm-hmm. uh, he was just one of those one of those types of players. You don't play that long without being a pretty solid player, you know. Yes. You, get those, you drop some bombs as they That's as true. Randy says around the show. So, um, yes, uh, Ian uh, confirms that with yeah. the twins. That's right. That's his team. There you go. Or one of his, te- well, probably his wife's team more than his. Yes. But the Giants, there you go. That's that's Ian's team. That's it. So you were talking about nicknames. Well, Uh-oh. this is a this is oh, a, no. a good nickname. We're going to oh, go down a rabbit no. hole with this one. All right. February 28th, 1985, Rick Rushel signs a free agent uh a deal with the pirates spending his first two months in the minors. 
That's very interesting uh, because he was actually a, um, a, a he had played with the Cubs um, before this for a long time. But after being called up in May, Big Daddy will win 14 games and be named the National League's Comeback Player of the Year by the Sporting News. So I had uh, I had remembered that his name was Big Daddy. And then it got me thinking about some other <laughs> Big Daddy. So. Um, well, let, let's look at why uh, he was called Big Daddy. He, he, as you can see, he's 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 a big boy. He's a he's a, a big man, and and uh, he's actually, a big daddy, not a big boy. A big right? daddy. And and he's actually very durable. He uh, he reminds me. There's a guy who pitches today. His name is Lance Lynn. He reminds me a lot of him. Just a durable guy that'll go out and get freaking cop from an eighties movie. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, he does. He's, <laughs> yes, who like, moonlights as a pitcher, <laughs> right? And he's like drinking too much beer at his uh, at his <laughs> kids' little league game and gets in a fight with the umpire. <laughs> and his boss is like, "You're off the force, McGonagall." <laughs> Yeah, dude, that's a weird looking guy. You're flying too close to the sun. Slow it down. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're talking about Big Daddy. Uh, Kevin, I'm going to go with uh, MMA oh. right here. You, you know more about uh, uh, this Big Daddy. I, I, so this guy just shows up in the UFC. This is, and he, he beats up this guy. He locks his arms up in a crucifix. And, and Gary, Big Daddy Goodwin, just starts going like this. Just Ellen the hell out of this dude. Looks like he just killed the guy. And everyone's just like losing their mind in the audience. He's like, that's right. Big dad is bringing home the bacon. (laughs) (laughs) Me and my friends were watching this live. We're like losing our minds. Like this guy is fantastic. That's awesome. And he was not a great fighter because he is one of those guys who more or less is just like, he's a tough dude. Let's just put him in there. This is back before like you have guys trained in so many different martial art disciplines nowadays and MMA. Yeah. He was just oh, a great this was character. like during the, the chemo days? Yes, a little bit around that time frame. They might have fought God. for all I know, but um, he, yeah, and he ended up getting exposed a little bit because he, he got, he shot some more training later, but man, I, last I knew he wasn't doing very well. A lot of concussions, a lot of getting beaten up, and that mm-hmm. happens to a lot of older fighters that they go to. Uh, wow. But he had some success in UFC and in Pride and in Japan, so, you know, I was happy he did that going, cheers to Big Daddy. Yes. Awesome. Well, uh, we're not done yet. We got to go with uh, Big Daddy V. <laughs> Big Daddy V, dude. <laughs> I'm, yeah. so, I'm so glad that you mentioned him. I have a Big Daddy V story. Oh, my gosh. Oh, wow. Ready? Really? Let's do it. Yes. Do got? I was on tour with Big Daddy V in Korea for two weeks. And <laughs> Big Daddy V is a big boy. Like, not only is he a big boy, he's also like eight feet tall. So he's a very large man. So he got his own personal little party bus to drive him to the shows. And if you get in good with him, you got to sit on the bus with him, bro. And you got to stretch out and have plenty of room. Super kind, super generous dude. Like he was a lot of fun, man. So wait a second. Did the Valley of the Sun's favorite son get on that party bus? Come on, dude. I'm a baby face. You know I did. (laughs) <laughs> I'm a worker, baby. I know what I'm doing. Right. But wait, were you actually a baby face on, in that tour of Korea? Negative, sir. Negative. Okay. All right. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You're a baby face to the boys. That's all that matters. You yes. Know? That's, it. That's it. And uh, he was also known as Viscera Mabel, King Mabel. King Mabel. Uh, he was in Men on a Mission. Um, <laughs> but actually, I would say arguably. Uh-oh. He was not the biggest big daddy in wrestling. Oh. That would be Big Daddy <laughs> Shirley Crabtree Jr. Um, and uh, by the way, on the on the on the left there, it says it says Big Daddy. So um. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Oh, hey, come on, <laughs> you know, you figure he, he he's busy. He doesn't have time to get off the road to, to fix his onesie. You know, that's yeah, right. exactly. So oh, this is a, this is a very England, deep England. cut if you're into British wrestling. Um, and, and I love uh, who's punching there is named Giant Haystacks. If I remember right. That's right. And and uh, he was in he was in WCW at the uh on Nitro as Loch Ness. I forgot because he's from like Scotland or something. That's right. Like, uh, That's right. Oh wrestling. But this oh, guy dude. actually was like the like was like a really famous person and uh 
over there in uh in the uk for, for like a good seven or eight years something like that yeah huge star for a bit yeah it did, dude, it, you he, know it did, it, it did help that his brother was the promoter but you know <laughs> but he dude he was over bro like yeah. If if you know how to get over, you can get over, dude. He's he very yes. popular, he very yes. popular guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the whole thing is that apparently uh, he was really popular with the kids, and apparently just don't meet – if you're a kid, just don't meet him after the show. Oh. <laughs> apparently he was not as nice to the kids after the show. Kayfabe, kayfabe. Exactly. Well, <laughs> we can't uh, go with the big daddies without mentioning big daddy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, yes, you know, pimping ain't easy. Uh, yes. And uh, Big Daddy came. Big Daddy came was awesome. I I, I liked him a lot. Yes. Super smooth flow. Uh, for all you youngsters out there who don't know him, uh, check him out. He he was super awesome. Uh, but for you youngsters, you might know this Big Daddy from Bioshock. Uh, I'm getting credibility now with the kids. Yes. Um, <laughs> Kevin's over there like, get off my lawn. Get off my, get off my lawn, Bioshock. Like, get off my podcast. <laughs> That's right. Who are you big daddy yes but I, I i'll throw it back here to um well this I, this oh. movie this movie is now 24 years old uh so we get i have to mention this one but i'm not going to mention this and go into this because we all know about this but you don't know about this there was actually a big daddy movie in 1969 um <laughs> hold on <laughs> hold, hold on <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dude, we got we got we got some resemblance going on, bro. Oh man, love it. So this oh, is this Big Daddy it. movie uh, starred character actor Victor Buono uh, in in 1969. As I mentioned, okay, and I and I want to mention this. This is seriously the plot of the movie. Okay, ready. A man visiting the Florida Everglades falls for an illiterate girl and competes with the mysterious A. Lincoln Beauregard, who is Victor Buono, for her affections. He also encounters vicious alligators and a voodoo witch doctor. That is the summation of this movie. I, I got to watch this movie. Yeah, we have to watch this and review it, right? Yes. Oh, oh yes, my gosh. Dude, we, this is, we have to watch research. this together. Okay, oh, so, so so Jack, you, you, you resemble uh, this man, but um, he was actually in movies uh, with Frank Sinatra and Dean Martin. Uh, this what? is four, this is four for Texas, and there's a very very weird episode of the '60s Batman. He's being taught. He's oh King Tut. All right, I'm sorry. I just lost my mind. All right. Oh my God. All right. Oh, oh my God. Oh Kevin my God. Pops, bro. Yes. That's and and that's, that's you, why I'm here. To pop Kevin. Thank you. Sorry. I got to relax after that one. Oh, <laughs> dude. Wait for that. oh my gosh. That's fantastic. Thank you. Dude, check the blood pressure, baby. Check the blood <laughs> pressure. That just killed me for a second there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right all right no, so let, so let, so so let's wind down a little bit i'm gonna wind down with the, these uh two stories which which I'm are good. are very oh, similar please. in nature but uh but I'm fun back. nonetheless <laughs> february 28th 1986 joaquin anduhar dale barra the son of yogi barra enos cabell keith hernandez jeffrey leonard dave cobra parker and lonnie smith known as the cocaine seven are oh. severely disciplined for their prolonged pattern of drug use and the dis distribution of drugs to others in the sport. Commissioner Peter Uberoth drops their season long suspension after they agree to donate 10% of their base salaries to drug related community service in the city. They played submit to random drug testing and do 100 hours of community service. Okay, wait, wait, wait a minute. You're telling me the one Met who got busted for cocaine was Keith Hernandez? Come on. Come on. That is some, there is some catery here. I think there's a little oh bit goodness. of, uh, yeah, there's uh, Man. There's You know what? Keith here. Hernandez is a good brother. He took one for the team there. <laughs> yeah, I would yeah, say but... about, well, you know yeah, what? Everybody, I think, I think he might be the only guy on the 86 Mets who didn't do cocaine. <laughs> yeah. I bet you Danny Johnson was doing cocaine probably. 
Yeah. Yeah. But the amount of cocaine that he did d- made him not use cocaine, like comparatively <laughs> to the other members of the well, team. I mean, they were just like, oh, dude, yeah, he's just a, he's a rookie, dude. Like, you just wow. gotta check that must check that mustache. He's a little <laughs> gray in there, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so four years later, no, on the February twenty eighth, two thousand. Fourteen years later, sir. He said four. Sorry, fourteen years later. Sorry, fourteen years later. Baseball suspends Yankee outfielder DH Daryl Strawberry <laughs> for one year after his positive test for cocaine in January. Commissioner Bug Selig does not make any provision for an early return to the eight-year All-Star, um, eight-time All-Star game uh, from the suspension uh, based on good behavior. Now, that sentence is garbled only because that's the way it was written. But I'm going to tell you the real story of what happened. So Strawberry was set to return to the Yankees in 2000, but after testing positive for cocaine in February while attending spring training, Strawberry was ordered to leave the team while waiting for Commissioner Bud Selig to make a decision on possible suspension. Six days after the news of a positive test broke, Selig announced that Strawberry would be suspended for the entire 2000 season, effectively ending his career. So before this, in 98, he had... um, 24 home runs. He helped the Yankees to win a World Series, uh, playing 100 games, uh, first time since 1991. Although, but he uh, started suffering abdominal pain for about two months, which he did not disclose to his teammates or the staff. And it turns out he had colon cancer. And I oh, totally geez. forgot about that. Oh, wow. I don't even know. Oh. Yeah, and then he made a comeback in 99 um, after that. So after all that, they come back, and then he did cocaine and got suspended, and then he was out of baseball. Yeah, and, so. and Keith Hernandez took one for him in 86, and look what yes, happened. Yes, he did. Later. He absolutely. 100%. You know Straw You know straw was using a straw. Well, maybe not a straw. But <laughs> in 86, it's very possible. Well, if Reggie Jackson is a straw that uh, stirs the drink, uh, what was Strawberry <laughs> Straw? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, so that is baseball history on February 28th.